Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look at how you can plan flights using the built-in flight planner from Flight Simulator 2020. So to start we need to go to the world map which is I'd say known by most of us because that's also where you define the starting point of your flight right? So let's click on it. Uh, in this case we select the Cessna but you can select any aircraft you want right so you can uh, depending on the aircraft of course you installed or those can be I would say both uh, paid uh, airplanes, uh, community airplanes but of course also the built-in airplanes like the uh, A320 or the 787 so let's go for the 787 in this case. Uh, so next step you need to do is you need to select the departure airport. Well, in this case, I want to fly from uh, Schiphol and you can either enter the ICAO code, as you can see, AHAM, which is stands for Schiphol, or you can search for the city like this. Or another option, of course, is to uh, use the manual method and that's why uh, here it is. So here's skip all and then you select set as departure, right? So set as departure is the manual way if you type it in here. So let's do it AM. Then it will select this as the departure and by default it will select the active runway, which in this case is runway 27. You can change that, right? You can go to the list and select different runways or you can select to depart from a gate, which is a little bit more realistic if you want to do the full process of really taking off, uh, starting the engines from scratch, uh, say making sure that everything is followed before asking permission to taxi, taxi to the runway, etc. Well, I would say the default option, uh, the active runway, Simply places you on the runway, all the engines are started and you're ready for takeoff. So in this case, we're gonna leave this option selected. So now the second question is of course, where are we gonna fly to? Well, we're gonna fly to, let's say we're gonna, where, I mean, let's go to, uh, let's search for New York. And you can see, you can type again by city. In this case, it will show, uh, the results, one is uh, LaGuardia, the other one is uh, Kennedy International and there's an aircraft carrier uh, also called New York. Well, in this case, let's go for uh, Kennedy International. And again, here it will show you the active runway. By default, the flight is configured as a VFR, right? A visual flight. So we don't follow any beacons. We just do a straight flight from Eham to uh, Kennedy, uh, Kennedy International Airport. So if you select this option, there are multiple other things you can do. For example, you can select four to four, which means that it will um, add a four to four. And in some cases it will have, I would say a high flight altitude available and it will add multiple waypoints to it, right? In this case, it didn't do it, no problem. You can still do it manually. For example, if you would uh, zoom into the map, for example, you can say, okay, hey, let's, uh, instead of str straight going to here, we want to uh, fly via uh, specific waypoints. In some case, you need to zoom in a little bit further. Let me make sure that the fields are set correctly. So if in your case also, you don't see the fill, uh, nav navigation and airspaces, make sure that this option is enabled, right? Uh, and then uh, select back and close. Uh, this will show you a little bit more as you can see, it shows you the uh, airspaces which you're gonna bypass, etc. It shows you also several uh, points of interest and of course the uh, airports which are close to it. Uh, that's one option. Um, for example, if you want to fly, you can also say add and that it will add, uh, in this case, uh, Newgrange to the list of VR beacons, right? Uh, for now, we don't need it. Uh, so let's uh, remove it again. And now it will be a direct approach from or direct flights I should say from Amsterdam to New York. The other options are the IFRs and the IFRs are available in two options. There's the low altitude airways and the high altitude airways, right? So if we select low, it will define several additional waypoints, intersections uh, to our flight plan, right? And you can scroll here to 
complete right to view all of them. By default, it will select, it will, sorry, it will set the departure to, in this case, to uh, Vola, uh, Vola 1P and the arrivals to PWL uh, to all and the approach is automatic. Uh, that can be an option, of course. So now, in this case, we probably want to go into the high altitude airways. And what are the high altitude airways? Well, those are higher airways above a certain altitude, which in most cases are used for, uh, I would say, transatlantic flights like like this one. Yeah. So keep that in mind that you can either select low altitude or you can select high altitude. Based on what you select, the ATC will also instruct you to fly a certain altitude, um, at least to climb to a certain altitude and then stay on that altitude. Uh, if you're going high altitude, it will probably be above 30k or 30,000 feet um, and else it will be below it. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the exact uh, numbers are. Uh, but it's a, it's a between 20 and 30,000, I think, uh, and above 30,000 during the high altitudes. But that's, uh, I would say for now, it's not the most important thing. Of course, when you want to do a real flight, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that if you're flying with a jet, uh, it's may maybe nicer flying the high altitude, especially when I would say making a long flight like this. Uh, as you can see, it found multiple ways, right? This is the default one, but you can also select this one. Or you can select this one. And depending on that, it will change the VORs and intersections which we need to bypass or need to pass to travel eventually to uh, Kennedy International. So that's cool. So now let's look at uh, this piece. Uh, first, so we need to go first back to Amsterdam. Where is it? Amsterdam is here. And as you can see, we're departing from runway 27, which is already activated. And then it has said this. What does this mean? Well, this is the uh, standard information. Instrumental departure, standard instrumental departure or SID. And the SID belongs to a certain runway and is, I would say, a kind of a route which you can take or which you should take after you depart from the runway. So, if I, for example, select this one, you can see that it's completely different. It goes to the south part of the Netherlands and based on that, it will uh, fly first to, I would say, pretty close to the, to the border of Belgium and then it will fly to the UK. So it doesn't make any sense. This one flies to the north, right? So it first fly, flies to the north, above the North Sea, then it will fly to the UK. Then we've got uh, this one, which is Arnhem, which will, f uh, which will ins result in that you're flying, you're taking off, then you're making a left turn, first flying to Arnhem, which is uh, here and then you're being instructed to fly back to London so in this case the one which was selected uh, makes sense but let's have a look at the other ones so this one could also be a viable one although if you would zoom in you can see that we need to make a very sharp turn to the right so also does make sense so rent also does make sense because it first sends us all uh, in the direction of Germany and then back. Now we've got uh, the next one. Also make does make sense. It first directs us to, uh, I would say, the center of the Netherlands and then back. It would make sense, but not if we're departing from runway 27, right? It would, it would make sense if we're flying or, or, or I'd say departing from runway 09, but that's not the case. So let's leave. Uh, Vola, which was the one uh, we selected as active. In that case, you will see that we're flying above the North Sea, then a little bit south, and then over the UK, uh, bypassing uh, Marham, and then flying over uh, Ireland, then going a little bit to the north part 
Uh, so we're a little bit closer to, I would say, uh, Iceland and North Pole. And then we're flying uh, into New York City or into Kennedy International Airport. And if we would zoom into that one, you can see that we've got the same thing. So you've got the arrivals. But if we select this option, you can see that we also have a lot of other options here. So for example, we can select direct, but we also can select a specific uh, approach for a specific runway, right? PWL2 all means simply that this arrival route can be used for all runways. You can see that the rover 2 uh, all also can be used. While this one, which is above, uh, this part uh, 31 right, this one is only applicable if you want to use runway 31 right. While this one is applicable to runway 31 left. Uh, depending on this, you have the other option to select the approach. And the approach, of course, depends on which approach you want to select. If you would select automatic, it will uh, let the HC figure out which kind of approach you want to use. You can still go back to the ATC and say, hey, I want to use a different uh, approach, right? For example, if um, a localizer is assigned to you or maybe even an AirNav or a VOR, you can select for an ILS approach. In most cases, it will be accepted, in some cases not. So let's assume that uh, we are not happy with this, with this arrival, and we want to use a certain runway. Uh, that's something you can do. Uh, for example, it would be nice if we can use runway 22. So let's go to arrivals. And then we can select, for example, uh, arch 22 left. In that case, you will see that the direction has now changed a bit, but we're still able to figure out uh, or to land on runway 22. So let's assume that based on that, we also want to use ILS 22. And you can see, once we selected the approach, our flight will change because it will first let us fly to here, right? So instead of making the left turn to runway 20 Lima, 22 Lima here, it will first let us fly here. And then this part is the approach route, also known as the uh, star, the terminal approach route. And then, uh, You'll be instructed to decrease altitude by the ATC uh, to ensure that you're capturing the ILS, uh, of course, and, and ensure that you capture the glide scope. Uh, so once that's done, you will land on runway 22. Everybody's happy uh, and people have arrived in New York City. At least they arrived at Kennedy International because they still need to travel to the city via different transport. Uh, uh, for example, helicopter or maybe a bus or a train or taxi right so here's where this video ends so in this video we looked at the built-in flight planner 2 from flight simulator 2020 uh, we looked at the multiple options which are available so we looked at the uh, vfr flights the ifr flights the low and high altitudes we looked at the approaches and how you can use them and also at the arrivals and the same thing for the departure piece um, keep in mind that you can still use the nav lock and that's one i just to think about we didn't use this one yet you can see here the maximum altitude is set to 40,000 feet and here you will see all the uh, waypoints or intersections we're gonna visit but also more important you will find out okay hey what's the um, I would say what's the phase of the flight we're in in this case after 55 30 uh, November we're at cruise, right? In this case, after 35, 45 November, we're gonna descend. And that's also what you see here, right? So here at Aspen, we're gonna descend slowly. And then we're gonna increase uh, the altitude again. Looks like 18 and then back to 14,000 feet. And then we're gonna decrease and eventually land on JFK. So if you want to have a look, I would say instead of looking at the map, you want to have a look at the navlog, open the navlog option and you will be able to figure out uh, the waypoints if you want 
to select one, you can simply select it and it will uh, show up here in the list. Depending of course on the uh, low or high altitude runways, it will change the altitude. As you can see, now the maximum altitude, altitude is uh, 16,000 feet. So keep that in mind. So now we're gonna really end the video. Hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to leave them below the video. And if you want to stay up to date about my new videos, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.